Okay. Frida, can you give us your full name and spell it for us, please? Uh, my full name is Alfreda Helen Greeno, and that's A L F R I E D A, Helen H E L E N, last can you, can name Greeno. Can you spell just a little slower, please? I'm sorry. <laughs> last name Greeno, G R I G N O N. And your middle name again? Helen. Just H E L E N? Yep. Okay. Oh. Her maiden name? That is her maiden name. Greeno? Mm hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, Frida, do you, you remember where you were born? Yes, I, I don't remember, but my parents no. told me <laughs> I was born uh, in, uh, well, my grandmother always said I was born in a little log cabin many miles from the shore, which is right here at Chicago Corners. Oh! <laughs> uh, Phoebe Skenado. Oh, okay. In what year were you born? What's the date of your birth? Uh, my birth date <coughs> is April 1st, 1934. Okay. And what were your parents' names? My parents were uh, Inez Adams Greeno. Uh, yeah, Adams Greeno. And um, my uh, dad was Michael M. Greeno. Oh, okay. And do you know anything about your grandparents or names? Oh, like yes. On your mother's side? On my mother's side, my grandparents are James and Julia Adams. And Julia's last name was Skenador. And I re even remember my great oh, grandfather, who was Joseph Skenador. Oh, okay. And um, I lived in that house for a long time. Mm -hmm. That's on my uh, mother's side. And where was that house at? That house was on, um, I don't know the correct address, but it's on Toward Freedom. Oh, okay. uh, double E. Oh, okay. Is e that where you e. live now? Yes, I'm down. No, where I live now is. Uh, where my grandma Julia had. That's her, oh. their homestead. Mm -hmm. And then just down the hill was um, um, my great grandfather, Joseph. Oh, oh, oh the, okay. Mm -hmm. I know who you mean now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And do you remember your grandparents on your father's side? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, my dad's mother's name was Josephine Petita Greeno. And uh, Petita was her Menominee name. She married a green also, um, but I don't know that much about the Greeno side because by that time they had passed on. All I know is um, his name was, uh, I believe it was Joseph, Joseph, Joseph Greeno. And then his brother was um, John, and we didn't know this at that time. His name was John, we used to say John Polier but we run it all together. Here is that Polier Street in, in um, Green Bay. Oh. <laughs> Later on, we found all, all this out on my oh. uh, father's side. Uh -huh. Your father was Menominee then? He's Menominee, yes. And well, your mother was Oneida? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. So that makes me half, half. Half, half. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do, you, do you know if your parents went to school anywhere? Uh, my dad went to Has Haskell. Mm -hmm. Haskell School. And uh, my mother, uh, as far as I know, my grandparents wouldn't let her go. First they said she could go and then they turned around and said no when it came time to go. Mm -hmm. So she stayed right here in Oneida area. Oh, okay. And then uh, did your mother have any sisters and brothers? My mother had two brothers. There was only three in the family. Uh, the youngest one was Adams. Mm -hmm. And the uh, other one was uh, Irvin Adams. Okay. Well, but your father, did he have any sisters and brothers? Yes, my father had, uh, I have to think now because that's uh, uh, Agnes Dick Greeno, um, Esther Greeno, maybe you remember her. No, I don't. Esther Greeno, um, and Bill Greeno. I believe that that's it, plus my dad. Oh, okay. And uh, where did you say you were born again? I was born uh, by Chicago Corners. By Chicago Corners, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, my aunt uh, would be my great aunt, uh, Phoebe Skenador. And uh, Julia lived close to Chicago Corners too? No, Ju my grandmother Julia 
lived on a hill, which is now my oh, home. Freedom Road. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, where did you go to school when you were going? I uh, went to school in um, Kashina. I went to Kashina boarding school at that time, mm -hmm. St. Joseph Indian School. Oh, okay. Um, I was there for about two years, and then um, my dad got a job with uh, Fort Wheel Drive in Clintonville, so we had to move. So we we lived in Clintonville for a few years. Then we're back on the reservation again, and I went to school, finished up in the Opet and then Shano High School. Oh. Did you graduate from Shano High no, School then? No, no, I didn't graduate. I waited till I had all my children before I graduated. Oh, you did graduate. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And what year after you graduated? Um, that was up here at Norbert Hill. Let's see. That was 19, about... 98, 97, oh. somewhere there. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Took a while. <laughs> Took a while. <laughs> uh, do you remember the um, holidays when you were growing up? Oh, yes. Um, uh, I remember my Christmas holidays especially because it was, uh, I had, there were seven of us in the family. I had there were seven children. And uh, we'd all go out to cut our own tree all of us to go out into the woods on a reservation to find the right tree. So oh. uh, we we do that almost every year. And um, Christmas wasn't all that much because we were not, we didn't have a lot of money. We were poor. Um, but we always had a good meal. And uh, maybe all we get for Christmas is um, a good meal at that time. Mm -hmm. you know? But it was festive, you know, for mm -hmm. us. A lot of times we made all our own ornaments to put on um, um, from school, you mm -hmm. know, stuff like that. Sometimes they made pictures and we could put those on. Oh, That was mm -hmm. good too. But you, you mentioned that you had uh, seven sisters and brothers. Give us their names, please. Uh, let's see. My youngest one is Joseph Greeno, Richard Greeno, Alice Greeno, Patrick Greeno, William Greeno, and, and I'm missing one here somewhere, and myself, as far as I know, but. You need one more. I need one more. <laughs> Did I say William? I don't think so. No. Okay. Okay. So, okay. They all lived with you in Kashina then? Yes, we all lived together. We lived in a log house in Kashina. Oh, really? Oh, just did you live right in or oh. about, uh, about a mile and a half out of town and it was just a log house and it, all it had was a it was one big room, mm -hmm. one big room downstairs and one room upstairs so mm -hmm. we were all you know on the upstairs there's a lot of beds <laughs> <laughs> and then in your later years after you went to school did you go to work anywhere I have been working since I was 14. Um, the summer, uh, summer years when I lived in Kashina, they had, um, I, I don't know what you'd call it, uh, but we had to work for the for government, and it was uh, picking gooseberry bushes. Because, gooseberry bushes? Yeah, because they killed the, the pines. Oh. There would be like maybe a f um, uh, 15 women on on a, on a truck out into the woods. we'd go arm's length apart and we'd have to walk you know um, mm -hmm. we'd get our brakes and stuff like that but we'd have to walk we'd get off the truck and they'd line us up tell us how far apart we had it to be we'd have to tie our pants legs because a lot of times you run into a bee and they'd mm -hmm. come up or snake you run into all kinds Ooh. of things so we'd have to always tie our pants legs up and try to wear long sleeves, tie those too, so nothing would get in, you know. And then walk arm length and, um, for eight hours. We did that, you know, but that and Yeah, uh-huh, for the forestry. Oh, and okay. uh, we got paid kind of like your, um, what the heck you call it, kids job corpse or, oh, okay. you know. Yeah. Um, very much we. It was fun. 
it was uh, it was a lot of fun because we've seen a lot of things in the woods and mm -hmm. um, we did pick a lot of gooseberries and then mm -hmm. they gave us gloves we needed to have that we mm -hmm. had to get the whole root out when we took it out oh, you know depending okay. how big it was some mm -hmm. were little some were big mm -hmm. oh. then where did you go from there from there um, I had children <laughs> Seven, and then um, I started work because uh, one income wasn't enough, so I worked for um, a corrugated box company, mm -hmm. and uh, that was piecework at that time. That was in Milwaukee, and then um, what else did I do? Then I worked. For, we, my husband was transferred to Chicago, so we, I worked in a. Um, Cookie factory, Nabisco. Mm -hmm. They still make cookies. And uh, I worked there for 11 years. Then we finally came back, came okay. this way. And, um, you and your husband, mm -hmm. uh, what, when did you get married? Well, it's hard first time, and then the second um, Warden, Warden, and um, and uh, Jerry, Gerald. Oh, okay. And what was your second husband's name? The second husband was uh, Lester Broughton, mm -hmm. and with him I had five. And what were their names? Their names were uh, Lisa, <coughs> Susan, uh, Kelly, James, and Blair. Okay. So. And, um, let's see, where are we going from here? We went through the holidays. Mm -hmm. um, did your mother speak Oneida? No. Um, my grandparents always spoke Oneida to themselves and with my Aunt Rebecca and Uncle Steve, but that was just amongst themselves, and it seemed like they talked the language so we wouldn't know what they were saying, oh, you know. But your mother didn't speak? My you? mother understands, uh -huh. but she don't speak, oh. you know. And then she, I believe she knows more Menominee than she does Oneida because oh. she lived there. Yeah, well, yeah, when she got married, she moved on the Menominee Reservation mm -hmm. and was there for a long time, you know, yeah. with all her children and that, so. Mm -hmm. She learned that language just from, you know, picking up here and there. Mm -hmm. And my grandmother on my father's side uh, could not read, you know. Oh, so okay. um, the thing I remember about her is uh, she'd take us along mm -hmm. when she'd get her pension on the, for like the first of the month or whenever they got it, and we'd uh, go shopping. And she couldn't read the labels on the cans. Oh, uh -huh. And I guess she was disappointed so many times when she'd go to town by herself and bring home something, and it isn't what the picture showed on there. Oh. So then she made us go along so we could... Help tell her, her what it was. yeah. Tell her what it was, and if it was chopped or sliced or whatever, you know, uh -huh. in the can. So um, that used to be a treat for us. We'd go to town with Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you learn how to speak the Menominee language? I just know a few words. The same way with the Oneida language. Uh -huh. I only know a few words here and there, and I can just say a word like "hello" and stuff like mm -hmm. that, you know. So no, I don't know too much. Did your grandparents go away to school at all that you know of? Um, I think my grandmother <coughs> went to school, but I, I was there a, a, a Carlisle? Mm -hmm. She went away to school. Oh, okay, at there. Carlisle. Yeah, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and um, my dad always talked about Flandreau. Oh, okay. So, yeah. that's all I can tell you about that. And then um, my grandfather, James Adams, I don't recall him ever saying he, you know, mm -hmm. so I don't know if he did or not. Did you ever get to um, visit with your grandfather, your great, your great grandfather, Joseph? Did you know him at all? I knew him. I knew him. I was very small, you know, but mm -hmm. I remember him. He's, to me at that time, he was a tall, towering man, you mm -hmm. know, with a deep voice, you yeah. know, and he was, uh, I don't want to say he would scare anybody, but I guess I was so little that you just, 
he seemed big, you know. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, they had a farm then. And I remember the old log um, barn mm -hmm. that he had, you know. Uh -huh. And then uh, after he passed away, <clears throat> then my Aunt Rebecca and Uncle Steve had it. Mm -hmm. You know, and that I, I, that was original homestead. Mm -hmm. Then my grandmother got that little piece up on a hill, so that's where, you know, I got you know that piece. You know, that was allotment land. I heard that that was what did you have at that time? A lot of acreage, eighty yeah. acres or something like mm -hmm. that. You had, and that's what that was at that time. Oh, okay. So I don't know how my grandmother got the little piece on top of the hill. You mm -hmm. know, it must have been probably a gift for. Mm -hmm. when she got married and um, that's become my homestead now. Mm -hmm. Is it is that taxable land then? My okay. piece is taxable land, yes. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Mm. Yeah, I remember when they used to live there. Mm -hmm. mm. Do you remember your parents ever talking about any kind of herbs that they used for medicine? Not so much my mother and dad as my uh, grandmother. On uh, my father's side, uh -huh. um, she. But you know, we were a big family, mm -hmm. and um, like cousins and stuff like that, all lived on the Menominee Reservation. Mm -hmm. And um, when this is what I remember of it is when my uh, when somebody would become pregnant or, or sick or something, my grandmother would always go out and pick something we don't know what you know mm -hmm. uh, I wish to this day that I was a little bit older so I could have went with her you know mm -hmm. to know what these are but she always when you would be pregnant I know this one for sure because she came to me with her with with this we lived on a farm and and uh, she went out and picked something and brought it back and she cooked it up for us on the mm -hmm. and and she spoke very broken English you know she couldn't speak real good English and she would say that we would have to drink all of that or whatever it was made up. Mm -hmm. We needed to drink all of it, you know. And when mm -hmm. she ran, when we ran out, well, then she would. She seemed like she would know when to come back, you know, yeah. to uh, to cleanse us. I believe that was a cleansing that mm -hmm. we had at that time, oh. you know, uh -huh. or any uh, sicknesses. She mm -hmm. always had things for us to take, yeah. but she more or less took care of the whole family that way, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and on my grandma Julia's side, um, there were just your common, uh, I wouldn't want to say common, but um, things today that we still use that our Jen Hinkwa has mm -hmm. um, that we can pick and use for uh, medications, you mm -hmm. know. But I don't, and then my grandmother used to make her own uh, salve all the time. Oh, okay. and soap. Is that your but Grandma Julia? Grandma Julia Adams, yeah. But, oh. you know, and I'm so sorry I didn't learn that, too. Mm -hmm. You know, all those things are gone now because yeah, uh, I don't, I wouldn't know where to begin, mm -hmm. you know, with some yeah. of the stuff that she had. Oh. Yeah. It's nice to know that they were able to do that. So. Mm-hmm, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so, do you remember... If if you uh, celebrated Hoyan up in Kashina? Oh, no, not in Kashina. <laughs> <laughs> but did Here you come to Oneida? Uh, yep, just yeah. Oneida. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Do you remember what you did? Yes. Uh, gra my grandmother would make uh, donuts. Mm -hmm. And Hoyan, that, when they would come to the door and holler Hoyan, then you would invite them in and they could have donuts. Okay. You know? Did you go Hoyan in yourself? Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. definitely. <laughs> I'm not going to get left out. That's like <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> true, but that's true. Yeah, that's true. Um, did you ever hear about the uh, New York land claim? Yes. I remember my grandparents talking about that a long time ago, ever since I was little, uh -huh. that someday we would get money. That's yeah. all I remember. You know, they, they would say that. Pretty soon we will get money. It's 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 there. We just so, have to wait. You know. So it goes back a long a way. A long way because yeah. I was little when I heard that. Uh -huh. You know, yeah. and I thought, oh, you know, you don't pay much attention to it. I guess yeah. we should listen a little closer when we're young, but we don't. So. Yeah. You remember getting your fifty-two cents a year? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, but my see, I was on the Menominee roll first, so that's oh, why I think I got okay. left out on that. Oh, um, okay. And, and, uh, Are you on the Oneida roll now? I'm on now? the Oneida roll now, yeah. Uh -huh. 
Um, but I remember my Uncle Ira being mad because that's all I got is 52 cents. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do children uh, um, use the education funds at all? Have they used it? Or your grandchildren maybe? That the tribe provides? Uh, yes, they do. As a matter of fact, my daughter Lisa has used it, and uh, my granddaughter Cassandra has used it oh. uh, to further their education. My son Blair is now, uh, he is just completing his master's, I believe. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. So Wonderful. I'm very, very happy with that. Yeah. Uh, he'll be graduating this, this month. Oh, this month. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah. So you'll have a big graduation party? Oh, yes, definitely. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, so um, how many grandchildren do you have? I have um, nine grandchildren and uh, four great-grandchildren going on five. Can so. you give us the names of your grandchildren? Oh, my gosh. Let's see. I have uh, Drew Metoxin. Memphis Metoxin, um, I can't even think now, Morgan, but she is, um, she takes her mother's last name, so I, I don't really know that so well, Morgan, and then um, I have, a, well there's only three, it's three and then one more coming in uh, April, Okay. so I only had three. Now, did you name all your grandchildren? Yep. Mm-hmm. There's one more coming in April, I said. Okay. I only had three. Where does Hattie that's fit in here? Oh, my ha Hattie is my granddaughter. Well, that, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, that was great-grandchildren. Right, that was the great-grandchildren. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Wow, where do I start? I guess I start with Hattie and uh, Sonny. And um, that would be Broughton. And then there would be... Um, Lisa Metoxin would have Jennifer Marie, Drew, and uh, Cassandra. Okay. And how many is that? So you got me all confused already. Five, I think. Yeah. Five, okay. And then I have uh, Thomas and Philip. Oh, okay. That's it. Yeah, that's seven. Yeah. Oh, no, no. And then um, with Blair, there's two more. Blair and Michelle, there's... Um, <laughs> Don, Marie, mm -hmm. and um, Thor. Okay. So, should be nine. <laughs> <laughs> Is your mother still living? Yes, my mother's still living. She's been in a nursing home for, Inez has been in a nursing home for two, almost two and a half years. Uh -huh. And uh, the doctors, she's 91. The oh, doctor my. said she's able to come home if we can find a place for her. And because she's 91 and she is pretty, can get around pretty good, I, I brought her to my home. So for, she's living with you She's now? living with me, yes. Uh -huh. Oh, wonderful. So, yeah. I don't know um, if I'll be able to hold up, but <laughs> I'm going to try. <laughs> but that made her happy. Huh? Oh, yeah. She's very happy just to be home uh, for the holidays now. You know, uh -huh. she's just mellowed out, seems like. So. Oh, good. Very good. That's nice to hear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you think about the health center? The health center? Mm -hmm. I, do you uh, use the health center? I use the health center a lot. Um, I think it's it's an advantage, and I'm so happy that they have such a wonderful, wonderful program for diabetes. Oh, okay. You know, I yeah. I. Um, I have diabetes, uh -huh. and um, I never thought I would have it. I, mm -hmm. you know, but it, it strikes everybody. Yeah. So um, I was scared I, because uh, my blood sugar was three hundred and something. Oh my goodness! And that scared me, and I didn't know which way to go. So I had been doctoring with uh, Seymour mm -hmm. Prevea, and I went there, and they didn't know. Um, well, first they sent me right away to. They gave me what they could. They gave me medication. They took my blood, all that stuff. And then I thought, I wasn't satisfied with that because it, it didn't seem like I was getting what I needed. Mm -hmm. So I thought, uh, my cousin Rose Johnson, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And uh, Bernie Johnson, they said, well, go to the clinic because they got such a good program there. And I thought, well, I'm going. So I did. I called them. And uh, they, they had me come in that same day. And I was in there for over an hour and a half with them explaining to me about mm -hmm. diabetes. Ooh, so wonderful. I just think they got the best program around any mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the nurses take the time to explain everything to you. You know, I, I really think this is a good facility. Mm -hmm. And um, the clinic itself is good. Uh, they have everything available for you. You know, um, only one thing is the waiting for the prescriptions. Oh, they yeah. can improve in that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, what about uh, the elderly programs? Well, I am working for the elderly program. And what are you doing? I am a, um, I'm a driver, um, Meals on Wheels driver. Oh, okay. And it's four hours a day. I think they have a <coughs> very good program. Uh, the only thing that I see... I would like to see different is that um, the elderly services, um, I don't know how to say this, uh, get more people involved with visiting the people that are in home and home cannot get out. Mm -hmm. A lot of them that I have gone to see or have because we did a survey mm -hmm. and um, a lot of them, all they wish for is for somebody to come visit them or come and play cards with them, yeah. or come and read with them, you mm -hmm. know. Just for a few minutes even, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I, there's some that don't have family, mm -hmm. and those are the yeah. ones I feel need extra attention. Mm -hmm. And uh, when, I, when I deliver meals, I try to talk to everyone, yeah. you know, visit with them a little mm -hmm. bit, see how they're feeling, you mm -hmm. know, stuff like that. So, but the, uh, I, really, I really think the Oneida tribe has one of the best. Mm -hmm. it, we're... I think they should be commended for what they do mm -hmm. for our people. Um, I, I, there's trial and error, but we're working on it. Yeah, you know, so that's how I see yeah. it. Are you aware of the Faith in Action program? Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am. Uh -huh. And they're trying to do that. Yes, and I have. We have meetings up at the senior center, mm -hmm. and I try to be involved with it as much as I can. But uh, they're uh, they're. They have separate meetings too, mm -hmm. you know, and, mm -hmm. and then I'm out on the road, so I can't beat all of them, so, yeah. but I try. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. So what do you think about the per capita? That's a godsend, because it seems like uh, there's not enough, uh, I don't make enough money, that's why I'm back to work, you know, mm -hmm. and I need, uh, and the cost of things today, um, I'm thankful for what I get. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'm thankful for my health, mm -hmm. you know, that I'm, and I'm thankful for being able to work, you know, <clears throat> to do things for myself. Um, and uh, per capita kind of uh, takes the burden off my shoulders mm -hmm. when we get it, you know, mm -hmm. so that's what I think about per cap. Do you think the tribe has enough, uh, are doing enough for the elders with their different programs? I think so. I think they're trying to find everything, and like you said, that faith in action program. Mm -hmm. Now that's just getting the ball rolling, mm -hmm. but I think they'll they'll nip the things in the bud that, like what I see, you know, mm -hmm. uh, they're starting to to grow. Like they're they're reaching out to mm -hmm. people now, you know, and mm -hmm. and that's that's what's needed. Are you aware of the home ownership program that they have for the elders? Or what do they call it? Rehabbing their homes and that? Um, as a home ownership, I have one of those homes. One of the elderly homes? And one of the elderly homes. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm thankful for that roof over my head. Mm -hmm. That I have a, a replacement home. A I replacement think they were home. Calling yes, a replacement is what it was. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh, if it wasn't for that replacement home, I wouldn't be able to have my mother home. Mm -hmm. I have the room for her to come home yeah. and uh, live with me. Oh, well, know, that's so. wonderful. Yeah. yeah. I know they've done a number of those. They have. Homes. They've done a lot. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what did I miss, guys? Oh, the casino. Oh, yeah. What do you think about the casino? Well, I don't spend much money there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I do feel that uh, the jobs that it provides is an asset for us, for our people. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and there's more, there's more, 
more jobs available now than there ever was, mm -hmm. you know, through the casino. Mm -hmm. If you want to work, you can find a job, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, uh, it's income for so many of our people. I see, you know, we see more homes today than mm -hmm. there ever was before. Uh, um, new cars for, for mm -hmm. people that are working and builds their um, uh, their ego or their uh, self-esteem. It builds mm -hmm. their self-esteem so they want it. You know, yeah. once they start getting those uh, paychecks and, and uh, providing for their families, it just seems like there's no end to what they can do for themselves. And do you, I think do you that's think great. that the tribe is spending the casino monies wisely, the income from the casinos? As far as I can see, or what I read, mm -hmm. um, I think they are, mm -hmm. you know. Because it benefits so many people. It benefits so many of our people, mm -hmm. so many of them, you know. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm thankful for what, what we have, mm -hmm. you know. I think uh, we are one of the best organized <coughs> of, of all reservations that mm -hmm. I see, you know. I have been to other reservations and lived on other reservations and mm -hmm. I think this is the best organized that I have seen. Okay. Even like down south, mm -hmm. you know, uh, my son lives in New Mexico so um, I see a lot of poor people, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm thankful what we do have. Mm -hmm. I wish other people could see this, you know, um, maybe they'd appreciate because mm -hmm. a lot of people after a while they don't appreciate, they okay. should appreciate what mm -hmm. they have. Yeah, I know how that is. Okay. Is that about it? Uh, recommendation to the youth. Okay. What would you recommend to the youth today? Thinking back on myself, <clears throat> I would recommend um, schooling, most definitely schooling. Try to get that in. Uh, there's so many drugs out there and it's so easy, they're so easily led by uh, peer pressure. I hope they are strong and, and able to turn away from those things, mm -hmm. you know, because life is so short. Um, all the sadness that, that those drugs and alcohol bring, I, I have gone through all of that, you know, with my family and my children and my parents that I would like to see them stay away from all of that if they can, mm -hmm. you know. And they always say walk to straight and narrow. I, I really believe that they should and they should find their roots. If they need, even going back to getting their Indian name, mm -hmm. give them that self-esteem that they need, you know, mm -hmm. they need to have that. Mm -hmm. And I, I have been lost for so many years because I didn't, um, I, could, I couldn't walk I couldn't be white and I couldn't be Indian and it took me a long time, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, now I belong to a, a um, I go Madewin and I, uh, I go to ceremony four times a year and that's just like a, um, like going to church, mm -hmm. you know. I also go to church, you know, but to me this is bringing back my roots and I, I feel that all Children should do that. Mm -hmm. Find their roots, find their Indian name, follow that path. Mm -hmm. This is what's needed beside their education. Could you tell me what Madewin is? Madewin is uh, Ojibwe. Oh, okay. So, and uh, that's practiced up uh, around uh, Bad River. Oh, okay. So I go up there four times a year. Mm -hmm. It isn't always there. Sometimes we go into Canada. It just, sometimes we're in Minneapolis, you know. Mm -hmm. But I do this for myself, and mm -hmm. I come back so much like on cloud nine. <laughs> and then you come back and you have to see all of this stuff and get back down, get your feet back on the earth, yeah. you know. So uh, this have, is how I, I practice. Do you have any other church affiliation? Yes, other than I go that? to the Methodist church. Methodist mm -hmm. church? Oh, yes, I'm oh, a okay. member of the Methodist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I can bring those two together. Good. You know, they work Very together good. for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess that's about it, huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank you for coming today. Mm -hmm.
And when we get the tapes done, I'll deliver one to your house for you. Oh, that would be just wonderful. Yeah. So you'll have a copy, and the tribe will have a copy. All right. So. Well, thank you very much. And they'll unhook you. Mm-hmm.